three multivariate analysis. Uh, today we are going to cover up uh, introduction to multivariate analysis, uh, techniques of clustering, principal component analysis, factor analysis, and market basket analysis. So, what is multivariate analysis? Typically speaking, we have already done this in terms of linear regression, logistic regression, and decision tree. Uh, uh, primarily, and whenever we are talking about more than one variable, that is where we say that it is multivariate analysis, right? So in this session, we are going to do clustering, which is a partitioning technique, which helps us to understand how can profiles be created out of data. We traditionally have been doing this with reference to pivot tables, but when data becomes huge and there are more than two dimensions, it's look, it looks a little bit difficult to analyze the data. That's where you will use a technique like clustering, which will help you to do this part. Uh, the majority of data sets collected by researchers in all disciplines are multivariate. That means several measurements, observations or recordings are taken on each of the units in the data set. Right? In few of the cases, it might be sensible to isolate each variable and study it separately. But otherwise, for most of the cases, it makes sense to examine them simultaneously and correlate them together. Right? So you're not just interested in correlations, but you're interested in multivariate analysis, wherein you're trying to relate one variable with multiple variables if it is something like linear or logistic. <clears throat> if it is clustering, we just have the x's and we don't have the y's. If it is about factor analysis, we are just trying to analyze which factor is more important if we have to use that further for processing the data. If it is about principal component analysis, it's basically to understand can we create a new variable out of the existing ones which has high variability on one of the dimension and the remaining dimensions, the variation is reduced. So that is our intention. So multivariate statistical analysis refers to multiple advanced techniques for examining relationship amongst various variables all at one time. And this includes for both descriptive and exploratory analysis and makes sense to use it for inferential statistics as well. <clears throat> so primary techniques we are going to cover would be clustering, principal component analysis, factor analysis and market basket analysis. Clustering, we are going to cover hierarchical as well as k-means. Now, hierarchical is nothing but like a decision tree only. Whereas k-means would be something like a distance-based computing wherein we try to isolate what is the distance between the centroids of data and the relative cluster elements and basically try to optimize the cluster by using some of squared errors as the primary means of isolating homogeneous clusters and heterogeneous within clusters. Right. Principal component analysis is for understanding which of the factors are playing an important role uh, and that's where we can somewhere relate this very closely, closely to linear regression also. Factor analysis is nothing but you again have exploratory factor analysis also which is part of basic factor analysis wherein you try to uh, uh, understand which are the major factors. Now the second and the third technique that is the principal and the factor analysis are basically used in market research more often. Whereas clustering and market basket analysis is more often used in data mining, machine learning and all those things. <clears throat> so we'll come to the topic of clustering. So what is clustering? As the word itself says, you are just trying to huddle up the data points together in one place. So if I say in a class of students, if I say that I want to cluster the databases age, so what I mean to say is that I want to group the data. So maybe people who are about the age of 20 and people who are below the age of 20, I want to create two clusters basis this age parameter, right? So that is my intention, basically separation or partitioning of the data. And usually when I'm talking about clustering, it's usually an, uh, a technique wherein I am not supervising it, right? So it's an unsupervised learning technique, right? So the algorithm itself learns from the data without an individual actually getting in there and setting up the parameters. Obviously you have to set up some of the things like the number of clusters you expect from the data. So why clustering? Because it's a typical undirected, like means when you start with clustering, you don't have an intention. Right? So it's first thing which you will do with data is clustering. Because you want to understand an unknown data, you'll first start to profile the customers or whatever the data is. And that is why clustering because a very important data mining technique. Based on the similarities and dissimilarities within a data set, right? So there are different observations in the data and there are different parameters, which we call as columns or variables. So based on their behavior with respect to the different variables, we want to create classes in the data which can stand out from the rest and show a similar kind of behavior within that homogeneous segment or cluster. Uh, 
when we do clustering in business data we call this as market segmentation when we do this in something like data mining it is called as clustering right and when we do the same thing in a hard disk we call it partitioning right we basically want to partition the disk space where nothing is returned and something is returned into two different silos and that is clustering partitioning natural now an unsupervised learning where the goal is to segment the data into similar groups instead of prediction so the intention of a prediction is to forecast <clears throat> the intention of clustering is not to forecast the intention of clustering is just to understand the data right so it could be possible that first you might do clustering and within that cluster of data you might do some supervised learning algorithm like linear or logistic regression right because it makes more sense if you first have similar type of data and then based on that you try to do something like a predictive modeling right now also one more important aspect is that you never try to overfit your model right so if you if you do that then the problem comes about high variance in the data so you have to be very sure about that also so we are going to cover hierarchical clustering and k means clustering right the k means in itself says that somewhere the statistics of means would be utilized in this clustering approach <clears throat> So before we start, we should know what are we actually measuring to create these clusters. So when you, when you're grouping people, you can either group them based on the similarities which they have, or you can look at the dissimilarities between them, right? So if you have a conference happening, right? And in that, if you want to do a clustering, you can say that, okay, people from these, these, these companies are sitting together in a group. That's a natural behavior in data, right? But when you're looking at a huge data set, it might be scattered and you're principally trying to isolate data and create small data set partitions which look somewhere similar to each other so maybe when i segment within a segment i want to see similar type of observations <clears throat> and that observation set should be different from some other cluster wherein the uh, the similarity is unique between them but between these two segments they are different right so a bandra segment and a borivli segment right so when you're looking at from the housing perspective should behave differently like means rental values of property in bandra as compared to rental values of property in, in borivli would be different from each other right that's a dissimilarity and within themselves the properties in bandra would have reasonably a average rental value wherein everybody would be very close to that average value right so we are measuring either similarity or dissimilarity which in mathematical terms can be expressed as a euclidean distance between individuals within a cluster right so what is the euclidean distance so if you go back to your Pythagoras theorem wherein you said that okay <clears throat> the sum of squares of two sides when when and the uh, figure is a right angle uh, makes up the third side which is the hypotenuse right so you can say hypotenuse square is equal to a square plus b square that's the basic fundamental so this distance of the hypotenuse directly is nothing but the euclidean distance between the center to that point which you're trying to isolate right and we are trying to measure that euclidean distance right so based on this you are actually computing a distance matrix and based on that you're trying to segment every observation into different pockets of data right? so you understand more of that as we go forward so the a reference formula over here is dij that is distance between point i and j is equal to square root of summation k is equal to 1 to q x i k minus x j k square so it's basically a whole hyperplane wherein the data is spread and you're just computing the distance between two points <clears throat> now when there are different scales in the raw data the variables can be standardized in a usual way so if, if for example if you are doing some particle physics research and you're trying to compute uh, say there are two variables one is distance of the sun from uh, the uh, from the planet you're observing and then some other thing like a radioactivity index which usually would not be having a very high scale say from 0 to 10 say for example but distance from the sun would be measured in light years or maybe in thousands of kilometers which has a higher scale so obviously because distance is concerned over here you need to make sure that you are trying to standardize the data so that every variable or every dimension has an equal uh, importance in that analysis right so you might have to do scaling or normalization of the data also as you go forward Hierarchical classification may be represented by a two-dimensional diagram known as dendrogram, which you would be seeing in the next chart, right? which basically tries to show you the data in a hierarchical order. But again, this has some limitation because if the data becomes huge, the dendrogram is not very helpful. Right? So in principle application, most of the time you do k-means clustering and not often you go with dendrograms. 
So the distance between clusters, now we can have different approaches. There can be single linkage that is nearest neighbor algorithm. So your K means is the single linkage nearest neighbor algorithm. So within that you have distance between cluster as the computation between two points. So you are trying to, when the algorithm starts in the beginning, based on the number of clusters which you specify, it will randomly allocate, say assume that you are saying that three clusters are to be formed. So it will randomly place three data in the hyperplane, three points. Right? And it will start computing the distance of every observation from this point. Right? So that is the single linkage that is the nearest neighbor approach. And then you will try to form clusters in such a way that if I compute the mean minus xi square, right? So if everything is assumed to be an xij over here, and if this is the centroid, I'm trying to measure the distance from the center point for every cluster. And I'm expecting that the sum of square, that is the error which we refer to in the linear regression, obviously has to be less. Right? So the algorithm will iteratively keep on doing this till it optimizes to that level where the SSE is the minimum. Right? The complete linkage that is the farthest neighbor, in this case the distance between cluster is the distance between points that are, that are farthest or maximum from each other as opposed to that wherein we said that it should be the minimum. So it's an opposite approach. Then somewhere you can have the average linkage method also which talks about distance between cluster which is defined more on the average basis. So you're taking both the nearest as well as the farthest uh, distance as an value and based on that you're creating an average and that becomes a basis for, for forming your clusters. The centroid based one is one which we were talking about previously where it based on the mean or the median whichever you want to take as the centroid you're specifically saying that at this point if you take the average distance from every data point and then form the clusters keep on optimizing it till the sum of squared errors becomes reasonably very small or in a way if you can start seeing clusters which are homogeneous within themselves and heterogeneous amongst themselves, that's why we, you say that the algorithm has converged. So when we come to hierarchical clustering, also called as hierarchical cluster analysis or HCA, which is a method of cluster analysis, seeks to build a hierarchy of clusters. So the strategies for hierarchical clustering, basically two types. One is, uh, in fact, it's more than two types, but we'll cover these two. Agglomerative, that is bottom-up, or divisive, that is top-down. So when you are saying bottom-up, that is agglomerative, you start with n cluster. That means, say, you have 10 clusters and in which some observations are kept. And you start forming clusters in the next level. So you go up. In the up, upper level, from a 10 cluster, you might go to 7 cluster or 6 cluster. So you will be merging some clusters based on their similarity or dissimilarity, whichever approach you choose. And that's how you go back to the overall data. Whereas in a divisive approach, you start with a single cluster that is the overall data in the beginning. You keep on partitioning the data into different clusters and eventually you end up with the specified number of clusters, right? So both are opposite of each other, but the intention is to optimize, right? But somewhere when you're doing clustering, you might select not the last run, you might select something in between also. That depends upon what you want to do. In either type of hierarchical clustering, a decision must be made as to optimal number of clusters now, nobody's going to come and tell us, but we can have certain threshold values for ourselves that, okay, in retail, in principle, I'll first do a 27 clusters and then based on discussion with business, I'll merge them and see similarity, dissimilarity and come down to a rational nine segments wherein I can apply strategy because clustering is finally for applying strategies. So coming back to K-means clustering, aims at partitioning data. Uh, which has n observations into k clusters, k clusters which has to be specified in the beginning. So you have to specify the uh, the approach would be specify first the number of clusters, randomly assign each data points to a cluster. So this will be done by the R algorithm itself. So you don't have to randomly do that. You just have to specify the number of clusters. So we randomly assign each data point to a cluster, compute the cluster centroids, reassign each point to the closest cluster centroid right so this is called as the iterative process of cluster formation so you keep on doing this again and again and again and again till you don't see any further improvement in the SSE that is sum of squared errors right and uh, after a reasonable time you will see that there is no movement of elements from one cluster to another and you can say that okay it has converged right and you can obviously set a maximum iteration run also if you have uh, a compute uh, limitation 